we all know that there are different types of bodies. There are different types of bodies within the same family. I gave you the example of myself and my brother. My brother is five foot seven on a good day when he stands up tall on his tippy toes. I'm six foot two, so there's a big difference in height there. And there's a big difference in body shape and size. He's more of an endomorphic body, which means he's got a bigger, he's got a more massive body and a little bit shorter arms and legs. And I'm more of a mesomorph, slightly, yeah, probably a mesomorph. What that means is that I've got, you know, average, average or a moderate sized mass of a body and a moderate arms. And somebody who's an ectomorph, an ectomorph has got longer limbs. So a mesomorph is going to have a little bit more muscle mass. Ectomorph is going to have a little bit lower muscle mass. And the idea is that, that these body types are going to be actually helping you if you're doing a specific sport or within a sport if you're going to be a specific position. So if you have to change directions really quickly, it's better to be smaller. If you have to, you know, be performing, you know, acts where you have to get up high. If you're a outside hitter or a, cent a middle hitter in volleyball, you're a center or a forward in basketball. Having that extra length is going to be super important to your positional um, abilities. All right. And how we develop these things, if you look in an ethnic group and different ethnic groups are going to have different types and, and shapes of body. And these have developed over these thousands of years, over hundreds of generations, based on these two rules. Bergman's rule first, that the, if you're from a colder climate, that if you're from a colder climate, you have a more massive body. And if you're from a warmer climate, you have a smaller body. If you then look at Allen's rules, Allen's rule is now talking about the extremities, your arms, legs. And in this case, we see in the hairs here, we see the ear length. Because in a warmer environment, you want to dissipate heat well, you want to have longer limbs because your surface area to body mass ratio is higher. So you're able to dissipate heat really well. In a cold environment, that's horrible. You want to have a bigger body mass and a smaller surface area. So Allen's rule is about the extremities. In a hotter environment, you have longer arms and legs. In Bergman's rule is about, the, about your, your body size. You're going to be more massive body if you're going to be in a colder environment. And so now when we start to look at these different ethnic groups where, you know, if you're from northern Canada for years and years and generations and generations, now you're going to take on this big body mass and, and shorter limbs. If you're from some of the hotter environments in the world, you're going to take on this smaller body mass and longer limbs. And you can imagine that that's going to have an effect as to what sport or what position you play. But... The reality is that every single body type is suited for an elite athlete. So it doesn't mean, so this is obviously here a basketball player. She's got the basketball to show us that, but she's also got this huge length. And really one of the most interesting things is one of the classic definitions of disease is now one of the things that people use to identify basketball players. It used to be that if your arm length and your reach was bigger, was significantly bigger than your height, that was a diagnostic for Marfan's disease, a connective tissue disorder that led to heart problems. But now the majority of basketball players in the NBA would fit that definition because they've been selected over years because it is beneficial to performance in that elite level that if you have a longer reach than your, your height that allows you to play bigger, that's something we select for. All right, so if, you're, if you have this long limb, doesn't necessarily mean that you have a small body, but if you have not as massive a body, now you've got this great body for, for playing basketball or if maybe volleyball like this individual. Maybe you've developed and, and you've come from a, a background and a family where you've got a bigger body mass and shorter limbs. You're going to become a power athlete. This is an, this is an incredible power athlete. She's an outstanding elite athlete because she's got this ideal body type for the sport that she plays. If you're going to play something like you're going to be a thrower or you're going to be a decathlete, now you're going to have this in between where you're going to have a combination of things where you're going to have some length for certain things, but you're going to be more moderate. If you are going to be a distance runner, look at this individual here beside this, this gentleman right beside him. 
First of all, leg length is going to be important for running, as we'll see in a second. Even though this individual is super, relatively super short, you can see he's a full head shorter than this baseball player. His waist is actually at the same spot. So his legs are really long. His body is really small. We're going to see that that's really great for what he does. Here's, you know, other individuals who have playing different sports. And you can see gymnasts are going to be tiny because now if I have a small gymnast, I can rotate really quickly. So it's not that you have, oh, look at you. You're never going to play a sport because you've got X body. It's let's try and find the sport that your body fits the best. And so when we look at elite athletes, these are two incredible elite athletes. This is LeBron James, one of the greatest basketball players, and this is Simone Biles. This is probably the greatest gymnast ever. She's almost half as tall as LeBron is. They have extraordinarily different sports, so they need very, very different body types to be at this elite level. The best example is this one, Hikam El Garouj, still the world record holder for the, for the 1500 meter a mile. Even though he was, you know, this is Athens, so this is the, you know, a very early Olympics or, you know, 20-ish years ago. This is, you know, this is uh, the greatest swimmer of all time. And so what you can see is one is in, in, in the greatest swimmer, we're looking at somebody who's six foot six inches tall. Hikim El Garouj is five foot nine, but they're inseam, so the length of their legs is exactly the same. Okay, so, so Michael Phelps here, he's got a very, very long body. His body is super long, and his legs are actually quite short. And then he's got really long feet and big hands. Because if you've got really long feet and you're a swimmer, now you're, it's like you're wearing flippers. You have the advantage. But if you have long legs, legs aren't buoyant. The buoyancy comes from the, the body. So you want to have a long torso if you're going to be a swimmer. Short legs because those sink and slow you down. And then long arms, and long feet, I should say, that are going to be these flippers. If you're going to be a runner, I'm going to show you that what you're going to want is you want to have a small torso so you don't have much mass to you. And then you want to have long legs relative to your body size. So the optimum body type isn't one single thing. It's whatever is going to give you the best mechanical advantage for producing exactly what you need for your sport.